Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC card for this weekend. I think it's an Apex card, and we're going to be breaking it down from a betting perspective. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, we have three separate videos for the DFS, for the UFC cards. Two DFS videos where the first one, we go over all the best plays from each fight. And then on, the, uh, on Saturday, we go through a full lineup construction video where we just focus in on how to win that $100,000 big prize in the in the contest with thousands and thousands of people using Sims and the other tools available to us. Uh, this is uh, the contrarian betting breakdown uh, report, which essentially, I mean, the idea is to try to train you guys to think more contrary uh, about everything, whether it be betting on MMA, betting on sports, doing uh, stock marker, anything like that, just to be very suspicious of, of, of groupthink and very suspicious of when, you know, the, the, the lines and the, and the opinions just kind of converge on very uh, narrative based outcomes and very logical yet kind of easy to, uh, to see outcomes. You have to start to learn, I don't know how old you guys are, but the, 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 the quicker you could start <laughs> learning how to, uh, how to fade those types of things, the better off your long-term gambling and investing uh, results are going to be. Um, what we do in this show is completely different than all MMA, I would imagine, all MMA uh, content. We gauge where the public is. And when I say the public, I mean the sum of basically MMA gambling Twitter, okay? What happens is, is during the course of the week, everybody kind of feeds off of everybody else, else's information. And because we're human beings, everybody tries to spin everything into a very easy story to tell. Um, and part of that, is when you're doing content, the easier story to tell, you can tell with a lot more force. The other thing is that when you're betting, you wanna bet on something that you can visualize very, very easily. And so the more people visualize it, the more people show other people how to visualize it, the more human beings tend to visualize it. So the, the most likely outcome or the most logical result is what people end up betting on the most. And that's not even to say that it's always the most favored thing that people bet on, but the 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 wager that just makes the most sense when you just tell it to save a five year old is the one that is and is always ends up being over bet. So what we have to try to accomplish in this breakdown is to figure out what is the easy story, what is the path that everybody's agreeing upon, and make that very, in my opinion, accurate assumption that that thing is overvalued. Now, there is quite a bit of VIG involved in MMA in general, but presume that you can get to, you know, decent lines. If you can toss out that which is overvalued, then sort of, by definition, everything else is undervalued. Now, again, you have to, you know, you have to, number one, overcome the VIG. And number two, yes, you do have to come up with something that makes at least some degree of sense, all right? And that's kind of the line that you want to walk across. You know, you don't want to bet the thing that's overvalued. Um, and among the other things that are not overvalued, you, you want to pick the thing that, look, that makes uh, that looks the most logical. So, yeah, you can't just know what the public is playing and just fade it and play anything at random. You have to at least have something that makes some degree of sense. Um, but I'll tell you that of all sports to apply this approach, uh, UFC is is that which is, is particularly suited. Um, and I don't know what it is about it. I guess it's because... Again, you have these two people that are kind of fighting each other. And even though there's so much chaos involved, um, people that are betting on it try to like imagine this like plan and this 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 thing that's going to happen if both fighters do what we want them to do or even what they should do. But in reality, you have two violent, you know, people just trying to kill each other in some degree. And planning and 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 strategy sometimes. Sometimes it goes out the window. So uh, for all the chaos involved in UFC, it's, it's amazing to me how people can agree so fervently on, forget one outcome or maybe even two outcomes. And that's what I see a lot. I don't always see, you know, everybody agreeing on one spot, but what people will agree on is, well, if, if, if Jimmy's going to win, it's going to be by knockout. But if Jimmy loses, it's going to be because Jane uh, took him down and submitted or something um, so we're going to go through these through this card and 
One thing that I've heard people like about this, I, I got a couple of private messages about this video and what they use it for, and you can use it for whatever you want, is people come up with what they want to bet and they'll go through this. And if, um, and if what they're going to bet matches what I say the public is all over, they'll probably just get rid of it. Okay. So people use this as kind of a checkpoint to make sure they're not on, they're not on the same thing that, is kind of that moto, you know, master of the obvious type play. So let's go over the rules again. Um, we have, what do we have, 13 fights on the card. So here are the disclaimers. We're going to bet one thing every single fight, and that is obviously not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Second of all, we are going to be betting one unit on every fight. And yes, that is not the best money management system in the world. And again, we don't care. Um, and for us, one unit is going to be $180. And that's just what my one unit is, 10 times high, very lucky. And last week was actually extremely lucky. Um, and again, I do think it's healthy if people are going to recommend bets and they're going to put them in themselves, which they should probably do anyway. They should, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's healthy to disclose the actual amounts. I mean, I get it. I get the whole thing with units and people are, have different bank roles and, and you know, you want to gauge it relative to the rest of your bank role. But I don't know. This is, I think it's kind of healthy to do it this way. So anyway. The other thing is that because there are 13 fights and because we are going to be somewhat contrarian, I think, I think it's fun to do this. We, we kind of presume that the first 12 fights on the card, we're going to lose. So in the main event, what we do is we make sure that we bet something that is going to get all our money back. Um, so we sort of have to reverse engineer our bets in that one. But it's good. It gets you something to always sweat at like 1.30 in the morning, which is when this fight card is probably going to end. All right, anyway, uh, first fight of the night, we have Josephine Knutson versus Julia Palastri. And this one is, is uh, this one's really, really fun because you have Josephine Knutson who, you know, just came off a pretty good wrestling, uh, grappling-based uh, decision. And she's going against someone who apparently is pretty poor with takedown defense. So it seems like a pretty easy spot for Josephine Knutson to just kind of do the same thing. And... You, you know, you go around gambling Twitter and and you're essentially getting the exact same um, exact same opinion that it's Newton either by decision or maybe by you know, by a KO. No one's really giving out Palestri. Forget straight up, even at like plus what plus plus odds. And yet with all of that, I mean, she's only plus 154. You know, th this is the type of of weird line um, that should really make you very suspicious. OK. And she's been taking money pretty much all week with nobody liking. Her. So, so that is uh, that's another sign that there's something going on here that we don't know. So, rather than than be a sucker and playing stuff that we think we know, let's let the market kind of help us out on this one, and let's just take Pulaski plus the one fifty four and just assume that that you know she's got to have something. Otherwise, she wouldn't only be plus one fifty four if literally nobody's taking. All right, Shailon Nurenbeke versus uh, Mel Costa. So this is um, one of the kind of system plays that I talk about quite a bit. I mean, pretty much, definitely every week is the idea of the I don't say popular underdog, but the that the only available underdog. Okay, so this this is what happens. Um, people want to bet a fight card. They'll want to. You know, there are twelve fights on the card, thirteen fights on the card. And they're always looking for a combination of favorites and underdogs. Now, I don't know why that exactly is. Obviously, people should be looking to just make good bets. But people will refuse to bet just the favorites or just the underdogs. They look through the card and they say, okay, which underdog am I going to take? Okay. This is not a DFS discussion. Like in daily fantasy sports, you have to play a bunch of underdogs to make your lineups. But in betting, you don't have to play underdogs. You don't have to play them at all. Yet because people want to play every fight or whatever, and they, they, they start with, okay, which underdogs am I taking? So the underdogs that are just kind of like the most logical are usually the ones that are just over bet. And, and Nurembeke is one of them here, okay? Um, you, 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 you have a fight which is, I imagine, pretty evenly lined, I guess. Um, it, but everybody seems to be taking the Nurembeke side. I mean, who is really going to take Costa minus the 192 here? So I guess one of the reasons why people are saying that is because you're in Beke is, you know, got a little better wrestling maybe or something like that. But it's more of like, honestly, like, I mean, I got to take some underdog and this is just going to be the one. And there's really very little to back that up. So what they do is they they start with that and they 
you know, reverse engineer the rationale. There's another underdog like that a little bit later. But um, so we're, we can't play the Nuremberg side. I have to believe there's some negative value here. So this is in a weird way, even though, you know, you're minus 190. I think that actually playing Costa is the contrarian side. I wish I knew what you know, people thought was going to be the result of Costa one. And then I would just kind of take the other side and play a prop. But no one's really telling me that Costa is going to win. So we're just going to play uh, Costa minus the 192. Um, and again, this is something you can get used to. You can be contrarian while still playing the favorites because I don't know who in their right mind is going to be, be doing this, especially against when you need underdogs. Why not just play your in Becky? Right? This doesn't work that way. All right, Jekka Saragi versus Weston Wilson. Um, okay. Uh, Weston Wilson stinks. Weston Wilson gets knocked out in the first round. Jekka, uh, in his last fight, uh, I think it was his last fight, he got a he got a first round KO as a big underdog, or was it two fights ago, whatever? And they're basically sending Wilson, Weston Wilson to 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 get destroyed here. So what 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 can't you bet? Well, what you can't bet is is Sarah Guy inside the distance. Okay, that's that's literally what what everybody is doing. Okay. What's weird about this is that I thought this line was going to be higher. I don't know where this this Wilson money line is being propped up. I don't know who's actually playing this. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we have to do one of two things. We can either go with Wilson plus the two eighty, or maybe Jekka by decision. Okay, because that's something that nobody's really factoring in. People might suggest that. Oh, maybe if if Jekka doesn't, you know, maybe Jekka's a fraud, and maybe Wilson, you know does something. I don't know. Like, what's the more contrarian side here? Jekka by decision or Wilson? I have to think it's actually Jekka by decision here um, because Jekka did get knocked out. It, it did lose. It, I think it was his last fight. Hold on. Why can I not remember? He had one fight where he won early. But was that against Jubilee? Let's, let's, let's get this right. Jekka He got knocked out by Jubilee, and then he beat Alexander in his last fight. And he does have a bunch of wins over here. He's got a a, a uh, submission loss over here. Back in 2016, he got, got subbed. Um, so I think that those are the two things you could play. You could play Wilson, but I think that the way to go here is to play Jekyll by decision. Let's take a look what these odds are. Oh, plus 800? Oh, let's go. We're, we're definitely doing this. Check it by decision plus 800 for 180. All right. Um, Carly Judice versus Gabriela Fernandez. And, and we're going to do this again. This is this is the same fight, honestly, as the Palastri fight. You have, you know, Carly Judice is a very, very kind of a thin record. She's, she's six and one. And Fernandez, is, we'll, we'll look through this. She's Brazilian, so if you play her, you got to play that Brazil. You got to pay the Brazilian tax, whatever. She did get, she did lose to to, Bla, uh, to Blada and Jasmine Jur uh, Jazz Davicious. People are saying those are not that bad losses. And before that, you know, she was seemed good enough, but it's a couple of decisions, couple of decisions, you know. But yet everybody's on her, like everybody. And because you look at what her opponent, you have Judice. Take a look at her. Carly Judice. She's got nothing on her board here. You know, a couple of KOs and losing a split decision, you know. And yet, Judice is only plus 140. Um, so there were two things I was going to do in this fight. I was going to be really greedy. I think at the end of the day, I'm just going to be a little bit more conservative. Early in the week, I heard a breakdown that, you know, got me kind of excited about playing this fight in DFS a little bit. I had heard that Carly Judice actually is very aggressive on the feet. And, and I was going to get kind of psyched to play this a very low owns women fight uh, that's going to be, you know, higher paced than people think or, or just higher paced. But no one else has repeated that take throughout the course of the week. I'm not going to say who, who, who it was, but... 
I was expecting other people to get on top of this, but I haven't really seen it. I've got I've got a good mind to play Judice or Fernandez for that matter inside the distance. Um, the price is going to be so big. Let's see. Let's see what some of these are. Oh God! I can just play the fight finishes inside the distance and probably get cover my bases. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Round props that we want to do? No, fight props. This really isn't even that great. Fight doesn't go to distance, only plus 150. As I said, that's so stupid. It just might work. What What is Judice inside the distance? Uh, Judice inside the distance plus 550. That seems so low. We're, we're going to do it. We're, we're going to do it. Judice inside the distance, plus 550 from 180. You find me another ticket that has that, I'll be very surprised. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Jimmy Flick versus Nate Maness. Yeah, so Jimmy Flick is coming off of a submission win. And just when you think that, you know, you know what the public's going to do. They kind of surprise you a little bit. You know, uh, Maness is the obvious side here. I mean, he, he's coming off of, of, of a, forget that, forget that he's coming off of a good win. I think he was the underdog in that fight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I guess Mandanka, he was a plus 250, and he knocked him out in the first round. And I really thought that people were going to be all over him, and I would be fading him on recency buys and playing Jimmy Flick. But slowly but surely during the course of the week, you have this really weird steam coming in on Jimmy Flick. Um, not really so much steam as that this, this realization that that he does have these kind of miraculous subs in his in his arsenal, you know. And to, to, to that point, you know, Jimmy Flick is plus 425, and he's only like plus 700 by submission. I mean, I'll say this that. I would I would rather play flick by submission than plus four twenty five. I mean that seems to be his only win condition. Um, so this is what you can't do. Again, you really can't play. I think I'll be play play flick by submission. I think that's got to be like the moto play. Like if you wanted to fade Mattis, I think you have to play. I mean, think you would you would think you'd have to play flick by submission. So you can't do that. So I think you're just going to have to go back to something on the Maness side. And again, anything like, I guess, really early, I think is going to be over bet here. Let's take a look at some of these rounds just for the hell of it. So Maness round one, it was like minus 120. That's terrible. What about Maness round two? I mean, that's that's something we can do, right? He beats him up in round one and finishes him in round two. I guess that makes so much sense. So let's do that. Um, Maness round two for 180. You know what you could do? Now, I was going to say that maybe you could play it by submission, but but now we're, we're not going to do that. All right, let's move on. Uh, Tagir Ulanbeka versus Joshua Van. Okay, so this is a very, very popular underdog here in Joshua Van. Um, I really thought this line was going to come down a little bit more. I mean, because, I mean, you just look at his, at his record. I mean, he's, let's go back to it. He's had three fights, I believe, in the UFC, and he's looked like, He's looked like a million dollars in like all of them, you know, to some degree. I mean, he came into the, the pretty, pretty decent underdog to, to Zuma Gulov, and it was a split, but he really ran away with that. I don't even know how Zuma Gulov got one decision there. Um, and then Borjas, he that was a little sluggish in the first round, but he ended up doing well. He finally got a, a knockout of Brunes. I mean, he is really, really strong. And this Ulan Bekov still has this kind of reputation for being one of um, what's his name's uh Umar, not Umar, uh, whatever his name is. I know you guys are saying, oh, you idiot, you idiot. It's um, Khabib. Khabib's like, like the worst guy in the stable or whatever it is. So people really want to play Van. Um, so we really can't do that. I mean, I think he's going to be a really popular underdog. So how is Ulan Bekov going to win? I mean, what people are pretty well set on is that he's going to win by either holding him down and subbing him or just holding him down by and, and just um, 
holding it down and just making and winning by decision. So unfortunately, neither of those things you could bet. The only thing that's left is you could either be stone psycho and play like Dan by sub. That's not happening. Or you could play Ulan Bekov by knockout, which is what we argued. So Ulan Bekov by TKO, KO, DQ, plus 900. Let's get some, let's get him in. Let's get him, uh, let's take him down. Let's get a, let's get a ground and pound. Plus 900. Good luck, Eric. No shit. But promise you this, and you're going to be on the right side of the contrarian, uh, contrarian wall here. Josh Quinlan versus Adam Fugit. For a pick 'em fight, I it's 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 literally eighty five percent Quinlan here. It's 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 beyond my comprehension. Okay, uh, and and it, I'll just I'll leave it to you to watch the all the uh, all the content. Okay, but it's just it's just ridiculous, and most of it is Quinlan by KO, and some of it is Quinlan by decision or whatever, but the majority of it is Quinlan by KO, which is it's just amazing to me. So you, you can't bet that. You just can't do it. You can't bet Quinlan by KO. You probably can't bet Quinlan at all. But there's like so much value no matter what you do on the Fugit side. Um, and I don't even know how to play it because whatever you do with Fugit, you're, you're probably on the right side of this. But yet I don't want to play plus 105. But when I get into all the different methods of victory, I think that that all of them are pretty okay. You know, he could, he could get a ground and pound uh, knockout like he did against Kinoshita. I don't know if he can get a sub, but maybe, or he can get a decision. Maybe what we're supposed to do is bet the the the, the highest priced result for, for Fugit. Let's take a look. Fugit by sub is plus 900. That's pretty good. Um, but the thing is, is that when he got Kinoshita down, he went straight for the elbows. So I think that if Fugit does get that those takedowns, he's going to... And he and that has him win. It's going to be more likely that he gets that ground in town. So this is like a little annoying. I mean, I would play Fugit plus the three fifty, but this Fugit by sub is just boy. If that comes in at plus nine hundred, I'm really not going to be happy. So we're we're going to whip out here a little bit. We're just going to uh, well. Here's what we're going to do. We'll we'll leave this to 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 the records. If we can, in fact, find subs from Fugit, okay? Do we need one or more than one? Yeah, we need two. If we get at least two subs from Fugit on his board here, we'll bet him by sub. Otherwise, we're just going to take the plus 105. I know you guys are rooting for it. You guys are rooting for it. You want to see me piss away, piss away the money. Let's see. TKO, TKO. Well, there's one submission. Is there another one? Decision? Nope. Only found the one submission. So we're just going to play him. Oh, yeah, we're going to do it. You knew I was predisposed to do this anyway, right? So, okay. You get by sub, plus 180. All right, moving on. We have, um, where are we? Asu Amabaya versus Jose Johnson. Maybe. It's like a minus a thousand favorite, I guess, and he's going to take the guy down and and whatever. Um, what what let's start with what you can't bet? Here, okay, you, you can't bet the obvious him by submission, I suppose, and you probably can't even bet him by decision. If anything, maybe you could try him by by KO. Yeah, this this is actually pretty good, but we're good. We have to leave this chance a little bit. I have to see at least. A, a result where he has a KO. So let's do that. Let's go to Alibayev. Let's see if we can find a KO on his board. Sub, 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 sub. Well, there's one. Ugh, just, they're, just, they're just all subs. They're just all subs. He's max 110 by sub. I mean, what what are we going to do here? Certainly playing by decision. Or, or just play Jose Johnson plus 440. 
or we could play him by some in a particular round. I guess the only thing that's that's reasonable, honestly, that I think could happen is Almabaya by decision. Just Jose Johnson just, you know, being able to fend him off and just for three rounds or something like that. Plus two hundred. And that doesn't even seem like that great a bet. This is a this is a bad this is a bad fight. But should I just bet him by KO? He's never done it before though. Yeah, we'll just we'll, we'll just we'll just play him by, by decision. All right, let's uh, move on. We have Brady Highstand versus Garrett Armfield. I mean, Garrett Armfield is minus 190. And I will say this, that as many people were taking, um, well, I want to compare, for example, this fight, like Garrett Armfield versus the Costa fight. Like Garrett Armfield is, is I think, getting 90% of the picks. OK, literally 90 percent. And for a lot of reasons, number one, he's 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 picking up the pace. He has better, much better striking, not to mention the fact that Brady Highstand is is that type of fighter where the, the judges are not really going to like him because he's just holding people down. It's as if Armfield's like a minus 500 favorite. And, and yet still this this line is holding. So we're, we're going to go ahead and try it. And we'll just take the Brady Highstand plus the 160. I just don't quite get it. We'll just see what happens. Okay. Uh, Timothy Kwamba versus Lucas Almeida. Yeah, isn't that people really want to play Lucas Almeida? Um, uh, it's definitely a fight which people just don't like in general. And yet still the Kwamba is, you know, is still getting all this like minus 198. I think that really more money is coming in on the Almeida side. Um and so as a result, I think Columba is actually the more contrarian play. But I think what people are not expecting is for him to finish him. You know, he's typically kind of low volume. And, and we look at his results here. Let's take a look. Columba, we have, well, decision, KO, KO, decision, submission. He's got a lot of decisions on his record. Um, and then he had a, a split against Oki. So this is, I don't think people are really expecting that. So that's what we're going to play. We're going to play Kawamba inside the distance here. And I don't know whether it's going to be KO, submission, whatever it is. That's, that's, that's outside my pay grade. Winning method. Kawamba inside the distance plus 130. That's a pretty awful line. So awful. We're going to have to try it. Okay. It's only nine. Am I missing a couple here? Yeah, I'm. 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 I think I'm missing a couple. Or maybe I didn't put these in. I don't know what happened. Well, we're going to go back in a second because there are thirteen fights, right? So I'm supposed to have. I think I might have missed one. Well, we'll go back to it. All right, Douglas De Silva, Dan Judge versus Miles Johns. Douglas De Silva has that dog in him. He's been around the block. He's going to fight for your money. All of that good stuff. So we're going to go on the other side. It's pretty, pretty easy. And we've talked about this before. Those types of buzzwords are just always just kind of a recipe for disaster. So we're just going to take the stupid minus 142. Now, what we could do is play him by finish. Because that's what we're saying, that it, that that Miles John is going to, you know, more measured pace. He doesn't really finish anybody. What is him? What is he inside the distance? Well, well, first of all, let's see if he actually can anybody ever finish anybody. Let's see. That's definitely what you're supposed to do. But he literally, well, that's not true. He has a KO here, a KO here. Uh, I don't know what this was all about. But then he's become kind of a decision guy. Uh, this is brutal, but we'll, we'll just go ahead and do this. We'll just play Miles Johns plus the 180. So we have 10 fights here. What did, what did I miss? Did I just not put it in before I get to the main event here? Hold on. There are definitely 13 fights, right? Is one just not on the board? All right, let's go all the way back to the beginning. All right, so we played the Knudsen fight, right? We played Julia Palastri. I don't know why, but we did it because we feel like losing. Costa versus Uren Beke, dog of the week. So we're going to fade that one. Jekka versus Weston Wilson. Jekka by decision makes sense. 
uh, to nobody except for me. Carly Judice by TKO or submission. Let's go. Plus the 550. Um, ooh, I forgot to do the Maness fight. That's what it was, right? Among other things. Okay. So in the Maness fight, what were we supposed to do? We were supposed to play, what was it, Maness by decision? Or was Maness round two? It was Maness round two. Maness round two plus 400. Okay, so that's good. Uh, Urim Bekoff versus Van. I put that one in. What am I missing? Quinlan Fugit. I put that one in. I'm a buy of Jose Johnson. I put that one in. High stand Armfield. I put that one in. What am I missing? Is there only 12 fights somehow? Miles Johns. Now, now I'm confused. Sorry about this. This is actually pretty poor content. I'm going to count the fights. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I know you guys are thinking, oh, my God, what, what did I miss? What did I miss? Don't I have everything in here? Oh, Alice Skaroff versus Chocolo. Okay. You want to know why it's not in here? There's no line. I literally have no line on this fight. Is this canceled somehow? Maybe this is canceled. Is this canceled? Let me just, I'm just going to look at this. And that's good because I don't know what I was going to do in this fight. Let's take a look. It can't be they have no line, right? Let me see. Man. Yeah, I guess they have no. Oh, wait. It is can Oh, wow. They're all canceled. Look what just happened to me. So Alice Skaroff withdrew. Oh, terrible. And the van fight is off too? Oh, well, that stinks. Oh, terrible. Again, I'm sorry I didn't notice this. So let's let's get rid of the of the oh sorry about this. Let's get rid of this. This is actually out. This van, all this 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 Ulan Bekov fight is out. Hang on a minute. This is like ridiculous. Everybody's favorite underdog. Not sure, Van. Fight is off. 54 seconds ago. 11 fights. Sigh. All right. So in any case, we have 11. We have, now we have an 11 fight card. 10 of them are going in. And now we have to make up, I guess, 10, 10 fights of losses with this main event. Oh, that makes it easier then. Let's, um, it's like so brutal. So anyway, uh, Tashiro Tyra versus Alex Perez. You're getting people on both sides of this fight. Uh, Alex Perez, obviously a very live underdog, people are saying. And yet Tashiro Tyra continues to pummel people. So one thing about it is that you know, people are pretty well convinced that if Tyra wins, it's going to be by sub. So that's something you definitely can't do. Okay, uh, What you can do, is Tyra maybe by KO, right? So if you can get Tyro by KO plus 10 to one, you should take it, but you're not going to be able to do it. We're probably going to have to pick a particular round. And on the Alex Perez side, the only thing I could think of to do on the Alex Perez side, and this would be pretty, pretty legendary, is Alex Perez by sub. Um, if you can get 10 to one on that, I think that uh, that's pretty live actually, because whenever you have these big grappling exchanges, both fighters that if they're if they're relatively talented with jujitsu could get a sub. And Tyra actually almost got subbed in his last fight, uh, down to the you know coming down the final thirty seconds. So these are the two things we're going to look for: either Perez by sub, or Tyra by KO in a particular round. So let's take a look. Perez by sub is exactly plus one thousand. And let's look at Tyra. Tyra by KO is plus 650. I think both of those are probably pretty good bets. Um, 
So I have to, you're telling me I have to play Tyro in a particular round? All right, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to play the Perez by submission as plus 1,000 because I've got to win one of these fights. I have a couple of favorites in here, so I presume that one of these idiots is going to win. So anyway, you saw my frustration play out right live that those two fights were canceled, which is annoying. But we got you some action this week. Uh, hopefully we don't go 0-11, and uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.